Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Well, in today's video, we are checking out the Remarkable with its type folio because seemingly now Remarkable wants to transfer from a digital paper replacement and wants to become somewhat of a digital typewriter, which inherently in itself do a little bit contradictory to what the original message was. There's nothing inherently wrong about it, but if it does want to become a digital typewriter, then we need to kind of dig in a little bit deeper and explore what are the things that need to be improved or put in place on the Remarkable platform for it to actually become a real world usable digital typewriter. But before we do, if you do like the work that I do, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, ding the notification button, also check out the mydeepguide.com slash shop for MDO. What is MDO? It's a hyperlinked PDF file that can satisfy all of your personal and business organizing need, all in a neat yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily package, including an organizing and diary tracker as well. And if you would like to learn more, then you can check out the um, MDO playlist in the description below to get uh, much more information about what MDO is, what it is not, and then to kind of determine if MDO is a product for you or not. Now let's check out what are the things that should be improved on the Remarkable platform to make it a viable digital typewriter. Well, the list could be very, very long, but I wanted to kind of cut it down to top five things that I think, personally, I think they are most important and things that would be most beneficial for the improvement of the Remarkable platform, not overall, but only as a digital typewriter to make the best use out of the digital type folio or type folio was it called. So number one would be using the entire screen real estate, not just the middle itself. The resulting documents require quite a bit of reformatting once they are down in order to have them as a printed out document and things like that. And that's not what you want from, from a digital typewriter. That's, that's a completely unnecessary step in this case. Number two would be text justification. There are no options for us to actually adjust the justification of the text that we type. Um, if you want to be a digital typewriter, you need to be able to uh, align to the left, align to the right, align to the middle, uh, justify or, and justify in different ways, spread out the spaces or spread out the words and things like that. So, you know, the normal standard that a digital typewriter needs to be. Now, this doesn't have to be a full-blown text editor, no, by no means, but there is a minimum that needs to be kind of satisfied in order for it to be uh, a viable kind of contender for such a uh, use case scenario. Number three would be the selection handles. Uh, what do I mean? Well, Currently, for non-type folio owners, so if you choose not to own the very expensive type folio, um, you are not able to actually select more than one word, or you can select two or three words in the typed text. All you can do without the keyboard is double tap to select a one word, triple tap to select the whole paragraph, quadruple tap to select the whole text. But there's no, the most logical thing is completely absent from the Remarkable platform, which is mind blowing. But at this point, you know, it's, it's almost a consistent kind of thing as well for Remarkable. And what would be the consistent, what, what would be the logical thing? Well, when you double tap on that single word, it selects the word, but it also gives you the handles, the selection handles that you can drag and select the text so that you can copy, paste, move, adjust, uh, use a different title, put an enter somewhere, things like that. I mean, of course, there are ways around it, but again, this is another example of something that is completely unnecessary and it's, it's just incomplete for the Remarkable to be a viable digital typewriting experience with or without the type folio. Because remember, the users without the type folio can still type. So you need to make it a complete experience for all of the users and currently 
We do not have that. Fourth would be direct printing from either the desktop or mobile app. Yeah, printing directly from the device would be the best thing to do, but I would be satisfied if we would actually have the second best thing, which would be printing directly from the desktop or the mobile app. Now, here's the thing. Uh, when the Remarkable first launched in 2017, and even in 2020 when Remarkable 2 launched, um, it was, or 2021, huh, time flies, I no longer remember. I think it was 2020. But either way, it was marketed and it is. The sole purpose of it was to replace your paper. Now, ironically enough, if you want to become a digital typewriter, that of course doesn't mean that you are gonna have to have the paper, but it does mean that you enter now a category where printing out your typed content, especially in an office environment, is something that might be needed from time to time. And as such, if you want to be a digital typewriter, you need to have the convenience of printing within your ecosystem. Sure, now you can export any type document as a PDF and then, you know, um, open it up on your computer or on your mobile and then print it out, which is fine. But we're talking about the premium experience. And if you do want to be marketed as the best and as the most distraction free kind of thing. Well, isn't it a distraction that you have to export a document, exit the entire remarkable ecosystem, go into someplace else just so that you can print out a document? Whereas instead, wouldn't it be a far more immersive and distraction free experience if you could simply print directly via Wi Fi, right? So you don't need anything fancy. You have Wi Fi. Remarkable has that. It's a Linux. It can have a driver, it can connect to other printers. So wouldn't it be nice that if you could print directly from your Remarkable? Let's, that would be ideal. But let's say that they're, you know, I don't know, for whatever reason they can't do that. Well, at the very least, then you can let us have right click and print the document and a notebook that we have directly from the desktop app. Now that's that's so simple. I mean, you already have the drivers. They're part of the system. You don't have to implement anything other than the protocol to actually export it as a pad when you do a print that you just, you know, do, do, do the print function. Yeah, that would be number four. And then finally, number five for me would be something that I would call a reverse screen share. Now, bear with me. While the type folio is all nice and dandy, it is a limited type of a keyboard. It is small. The layout, the, you don't have all of the layouts for every single uh, language out there that's compatible with the Remarkable and that Remarkable actually um, uh, supports. So what I would propose instead is that you had the reverse screen share. What does that mean? That means that you're on your uh, PC or Mac and you're using the keyboard that you like and you go into your desktop, Remarkable desktop app you synchronize with the Remarkable, and when you start typing, you're typing directly in the notebook, but in the desktop app, but it's real-time synchronized to the tablet itself. So as you are typing on your computer, you're typing in the desktop app, that is synchronized back, and you see what you've typed on your Remarkable device. So that way, you bypass the need for the uh, type folio if you don't want it or if it doesn't have the keyboard language layout that you need and you actually have this really really awesome kind of functionality and that would be a far more usable real world scenario and an implementation of a functionality they they kind of already have, they just need to kind of reverse it. So it's obvious that the server has that functionality. That's the hard part done. You just need to go the other way around and and you don't even need to send the, the, the uh, strokes or the vectors. You just need to send characters that are being typed. That's that's even easier. And you don't have like locations or anything. That That's, that's supposed to be much, much, much easier than the thing that they already have implemented. So that kind of reverse screen sharing to 
Type in your desktop app or mobile app and see what you've typed and use your Remarkable as a monitor of sorts. You know, basically that you're, you're typing on your Remarkable, but you're using the keyboard that you like and that you prefer. Well, that, that would be a really, really awesome and a powerful step forward towards a distraction-free, um, remaining in the Remarkable ecosystem type of functionality and, you know, keeping it all contained within the Remarkable uh, and, and, and just making it a uh, nice, modern, flexible digital typewriting experience, which I would assume is something that they are aiming for. But then again, they're not that transparent, so we don't know. But uh, my guess would be that, you know, they would like to get as many people on board with these new features as much as they can. Well, those are my thoughts about what are the top five things that could be done to improve the Remarkable platform, or Remarkable 2 platform, as a digital typewriter kind of a device. Let me know what you think about this. Do you agree with my points? Do you disagree with them? What are your thoughts? Put them down in the comments down below. And thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.